So I've used this machine right here to scale my online business well past the six figure mark. I use this on a daily basis to speak to my clients, to speak to my team members, to post content online and reach millions of people. And as much as I love the things that this laptop has allowed me to do, I also realize that this can be one of the biggest distractions preventing you from hitting your goals. And that is why in this video, I'm gonna share with you the tips and tricks that you can use to transform this machine right here into a productivity monster. These tricks have 10 X my productivity with my laptop and it will work for you whether you are a full-time student, whether you're building an online business, or whether you have a full-time job that involves a lot of laptop use. And not only will it work for your laptop, but a lot of the principles that I'm gonna cover in this video will be applicable to all your electronic devices to 10X your productivity. So I'm super excited for this video, and without further ado, let's hop on my computer. <laughs> So here we are inside my laptop. And by the way, a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna cover in this video will apply whether you have a PC or a Mac. In this case, I'm using the MacBook Pro uh, 16 inch, so 2020 uh, version. And I'm pretty sure that I'm on the latest new uh, software update. Uh, now, the first thing that I wanna cover is the dock and the desktop. So I like to keep it very, very clean. And I actually think that is one of the keys to not having distractions. If your desktop is a mess, it's gonna distract you from your work. And not only that, but I actually truly believe that it's a symptom of not being organized. And that will show up in your business, that will show up in your nine to five, that will show up in your college work, whatever it is, but having a clean desktop really goes a long way. So the way I personally recommend you go about your desktop, making sure that it's organized, is just make sure that you have the minimum amount of things on the desktop. First things first is I've got this, uh, a folder called the desktop stack. And what this is, is basically anytime I download something off the internet, it will go inside this folder. On your computer settings, you can actually dictate where you wanna save all the stuff that you download from the internet, basically all your downloads folder. And everything that I download for Chrome on a daily basis, whether it's for a thumbnail or for a client, whatever it is, uh, all that stuff can get very, very messy on my desktop on a daily basis. So what I do is I take all the stuff that I've downloaded and I put all that content inside the desktop stack. And basically at the end of each day, I will go through all those files. And if there are any files that I deem worthy of saving, then I will go ahead and put them inside my documents or I will go ahead and upload it to my drive, which I'll talk about in just a few minutes. But everything else, I will go ahead and move to trash and then I can delete all that stuff, which by the way, will take up a lot of space on your laptop if you don't do that every single day. That stuff really piles up. It definitely did for me with my old setup. And that's kind of the structure that I have right now with this folder. Now, the next folder that, that I have is the official docs. And typically these are pictures of my ID, passports, any legal uh, business documents that I have to show. Anything like that I will keep in this folder very, very handy. And if I ever need it, then I know where to find it. So that is my desktop. Now, when it comes to the doc, I try to keep it very, very minimalist. So first of all, it doesn't even show if I don't uh, actually scroll uh, on it. And the main things that I have here is Google Chrome. Then I've got Apple Mail. I'm pretty sure I'm the only person in the world uh, who uses Apple Mail. It's pretty weird because I use the whole Google Drive ecosystem, but I've gotten used to Apple Mail. I really like the interface uh, personally. Uh, and so I use that. Then I also have Zoom, which I use on a daily basis for client calls, sales calls, team calls, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then I've got Slack, which I use for communication with my team. Uh, I use this on a daily, daily basis. So I wanna make sure that it's on my dock. Then I've got my calendar. I actually use a combination of Google Calendar and Apple Calendar. And the reason why I use Apple Calendar is to basically schedule in all this stuff that is not trivial. And so for example, I schedule my whole day or my to-dos on my Apple Calendar. And the great thing about that is that my Apple Calendar is not synced to my scheduler, which I use for my business. And so whenever someone is booking in a time with me on my available slots, which is typically in the afternoon, that actually usually takes priority over my to-dos. And so I don't want my to-dos for the day blocking in those times of my scheduler. And so I leave Google Calendar to schedule events with my students, for example, with my clients, with my team, stuff that is usually video calls and recurring. So that is kind of my calendar split. Then I've got system preferences, which is not vital. And then I've got a few apps that I was using before recording this video, like Numbers and then Loom, which I'll talk about in just a second. So that is my doc. My personal recommendation for the doc is make sure that it's minimalist, right? Only have the apps in there that you use on a daily basis. There's so many apps like Photos, you know, Photo Booth, that is just there by default that we don't use on a daily basis, which you can probably get rid of and it reduces desktop pollution, uh, to call it like that. So the next thing that I wanna do is go on System Preferences. And that is why I had it on my dock because I had it open. Um, and uh, what I wanna do now is I wanna go over notifications. So I really, really recommend, especially if you're using an Apple product that you turn on do not disturb. So mine is from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. That is my morning work block. That is when I'm not usually taking any calls. And so after one, when I start taking calls and I may have four or five calls every single day, I do welcome those uh, calendar reminders. Which brings me on to the next point. If you take a look at this, uh, I pretty much have every single reminder, every single uh, notification off, except for Slack, Skype, 
wallet, Zoom, uh, and uh, calendar. And that way I'm able to retain my focus because if you have all these notifications turned on, it's really gonna distract you from the task in hand. So that is a little side note on notifications. And the final thing that I wanna talk about regarding my desktop is the plugins that I use on a daily basis. So first things first is Flux. And this is a plugin that changes the color of my screen. It basically turns it into an orange, red looking uh, screen. And this automatically turns on in the afternoon for me. And it really helps Saratan with better sleep simply because you're not consuming a ton of blue light, which reduces the quality of sleep. So just for you guys to, to get an idea, uh, these are my preferences. And so I've got daytime, sunset and bedtime. And as we can see, there's different uh, color changes. I'm not sure if the recording on my screen will uh, we'll take that in, but it definitely gets very red when I approach my bedtime. So that is the first plugin. And the second plugin that I use on a daily basis is Loom, uh, which I use for client outreach. If you guys run a social media marketing agency or any type of online business, this is great for communicating with clients, for communicating with your team, for reaching out to new clients and new prospects. So yeah, I use it a ton. Basically it records your screen and you can also have the option of uh, showing your face. And so you can share any page, any screen, and you can have your face on it. And the great thing about Loom is the shareability. So you can actually copy a link and people will get a direct link to your Loom that they can watch at any point in time. So those are my desktop plugins. And now I wanna dive deep into Google Chrome. So we're gonna open that up. First of all, to get this look, I'm using a Chrome extension called Momentum. And the great thing about this is not so much the image uh, and the fact that it says my name, but basically if you don't have this, every time you open Chrome, it will tempt you with a bunch of different websites that maybe you've gone on previously and uh, you don't want that. You wanna keep your main focus for today and just get done what you hopped on Chrome to get done. So that's actually the first extension that I recommend. Uh, and uh, on the topic of, of extensions, uh, a few other extensions that I recommend is obviously Adblock. If you guys are marketers or advertisers, like me, for example, I don't recommend you have this on every single site uh, simply because I like to see other ads, maybe get inspiration uh, from them. But Adblock is definitely a really, really good tool to keep your focus. Another really great tool is Block Site. And so the great thing about Block Site is that you can actually go ahead and you can go on options and you can block certain websites that you don't want seen. So for example, you can go ahead and add Facebook, you can add Instagram, you can add YouTube. And I actually tend to have all those three platforms blocked from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. just like Mike did not disturb. So that is a block site, great extension. Now the next extension that I recommend is LinkedIn Feed Blocker. This basically blocks the feed for LinkedIn. And so I'm not distracted when I hop on LinkedIn to do business. Great extension, another great extension is Newsfeed Eradicator for Facebook. So pretty much the exact same thing, but for Facebook, and the final thing on the recommendations feed uh, topic is remove recommendations for YouTube. And so if I log on to YouTube real quick, so if I log on to YouTube, here is what I see. I see nothing, or no recommendations, nothing that can distract me. The only thing I can really do is search or go on my YouTube Google Studio, which I do quite a lot with my personal brand team and we analyze YouTube data and, and see how we can grow uh, further uh, with my channels. So those are some of the extensions that I recommend. And the final one that I actually recommend is one called Xtab. And basically what this does is it limits the amount of tabs that you can have open. And if you're anything like me before I had this extension, I would have so many different tabs open simply because we think, oh, I'm not gonna close this tab because I'm gonna come back to it you know, an hour later, but you never do. And so you end up accumulating all these tabs that just don't serve you at all, take up a lot of space on your laptop, but most importantly, takes up a lot of your attention. So those are some of the extensions that I recommend. And the next thing that I wanna talk about is my bookmark. So I've got everything sorted by folders. Obviously I run a social media marketing agency. And so my first folder is sales and outreach, all the stuff that I use for my sales for my agency. Uh, obviously that's a top priority uh, for any agency. If you don't have your sales and outreach in order, it's very, very uh, hard to grow. And so that is why that goes first. The second thing that I have is payments. I'm talking about my Stripe account, PayPal. I'm talking about my bank account as well. I pretty much have all my payment options, all my payment processors, my invoicing solutions are right there. Very, very easy to uh, access. Then I've got my clients. And in this folder, I've got all the reporting ecosystems for all of my clients so I can access them very, very quickly and get a very good understanding of the performance that we're getting for them. Then I've got Teams. Here are all the communication protocols that I use for my team. Next, we've got service delivery. We've got the ads manager in here. We've got all the Shopify accesses and websites for my clients. We've got their Klaviyo accounts, et cetera, et cetera. Then we've got my personal brand. So for example, the communication platform that I use for all my students 
uh, to make sure that they are held accountable to make sure that there's no roadblock stopping them from hitting that 10k a month mark also here i've got all the drive folders for my students where i upload all the documents all the plug and plays all the tools scripts templates that they get um from my mentorship as well as email marketing softwares content creation software that i use to put out content um so that is my personal brand and then we've got affiliates all my affiliate links all the brands that sponsor me on tiktok then we've got development so here are links to the courses that i'm taking the courses that i've taken in the past but i want to revisit or for example link to my book list i get so many questions on my book recommendations that i'm actually thinking of making my whole reading list public and it's actually broken down into different categories so we've got spirituality we've got sales we've got marketing we've got entrepreneurship in general we've got work optimization on a ton of different categories if you guys want that you can let me know by smashing the like button on this video helps a ton with the algorithm and go ahead and comment book list and if we get enough likes on this video i will definitely definitely launch my reading list for you guys to check it out and to pick up any books that uh, that you'd want and my final bookmark is my plan of attack which is basically my calendar for the to-dos and tasks that I've got to get uh, accomplished and at the end of each day I will go ahead and plan tomorrow today on my plan of attack and then I will take all those to-dos and tasks that feed into my main year goals and monthly goals I will take those tasks and I will schedule them on my Apple calendar not my Google calendar because those are for events only recurring or uh, video calls but for my Apple calendar where I've got all the hours of the day where I block in my working hours for the tasks that need to be accomplished so that is Chrome which is a massive ecosystem that is how I optimize Chrome uh, and now to the final thing which is the setup so the final point is the work setup and for that, I've grabbed my camera. Now, the first step in creating a work environment that is highly productive is not so much about doing the productive things. We've covered a bunch of tips and tricks uh, on this video, but it's about getting rid of distractions. So the easiest thing you can do to get rid of distractions is make sure that when you're working, your phone is in a different room, it's locked away, and you don't have it in plain sight. So while you're working, you're only working. You're not checking your phone and you're not being distracted by notifications going off. So that's the first thing that you wanna do. The second thing is the lighting. And there's been a lot of studies done on the effect of lighting and productivity and lighting is a key component. I recommend you get lighting from the side if you can. Ideally, you don't wanna put your desk in front of a window. And not only is it gonna distract you, but the lighting is not optimal. So that's the second thing. The third thing is make sure you have a bit of greenery inside your office or wherever you work, whether it's a little plant on your table or for example, bigger floor plant like I've got in front of me. Greenery just increases the vibes of the work environment and it will definitely help you. And the final hack when it comes to your setup is ideally make sure that you only work on one single screen. So for example, I've got my laptop right here and I pretty much just purely work on my laptop. I used to have a monitor that would be plugged into my laptop, but I realized that having those two screens lended itself to multitasking. So I'm probably gonna be switching back to the monitor, but I will just purely have the monitor and I will also have a keyboard, but I will not have two screens. That is something that once I switched, it definitely made me a lot more productive because I would just focus on one single thing at one time. So guys, that is it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed the strategies. I really hope you can take some of the tricks and hacks that we covered on this video to really take your laptop to a whole new level and transform it into a productivity beast. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop a big, big thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Also leave down below in comments any questions you may have on this video and I'll be sure to check those out. If you haven't subbed to my channel, there's so much content coming out on entrepreneurship, social media marketing agency, productivity, building an online business and a lot more. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and sub to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you never miss an update. And as always guys, hope everything is going well in your journey and I will see you in the next one. Peace.